this is part two of our conversation talking about the Jen Reed statue that appeared in Bristol uh, city centre recently. And we're just talking about the artist that made the statue, how we feel as black women, especially as people that are based in Bristol and, f- and from the city and hearing our voices and our opinions. Um, I'm Dr. Mina Fombo, founder and director of Black Girl Convention. And uh, yeah, welcome back to uh, this brilliant, brilliant powerhouse of artists, creators, entrepreneurs. Um, ladies, we were just talking uh, earlier about um, the analogy that Jana was giving about uh, a baby elephant and that's how you break an elephant and the elephant doesn't know how powerful it, it truly is because it's learned from birth that the stick is mightier than itself. Jana said it so much more eloquent, eloquently than myself, but you can catch that in our last last episode. Um, I wanted to bring the conversation back round now to, to Jen Reed. We've talked a lot about the artist. We've talked about agency, advocacy, activism, um, the people, voices, but we haven't really spoken much about her as, as a fellow black woman, you know, in, in, in the southwest, in our city. Like, what do we think about, I guess, her role in, in saying yes, uh, in, in participating in this? Um, and let's open that up wider to, to, I guess, black women that are part of the movement in the southwest. Who's going to come in? Well, on her, I guess. I, <laughs> um, I'll go. Yeah, yeah, go, Emma. Um, <laughs> sorry but um yeah no it's like what on her like you're done like she's for me it's it's like it's agency over someone that's so intrinsically you um from the sounds of things she's very active in within like black lives matter anyway like it's not like a van like, you mean, like she's very much this is kind of her like admin her ministry so for me i kind of feel like if you then but i come to your minds the white person out to me to tell me they want to like do a sculpture of me then put in my seat and then like, you mean, like i wouldn't probably say yes but I can't then judge another black woman for also recognizing that for her, that was really special to her, and she won like she was happy for that to go ahead. Like I don't, I'm not going to judge another black woman on that, just because I wouldn't say the same thing. If that makes sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. Anyone else? Josie? Absolutely, go get it, girl. Like hundred percent. Like if a white what sculpturist what sculpture what do we call it <laughs> come up to me and ask me I'd be like absolutely yes and I would probably I'd, I'm not sure how the process exactly went with those two I'm not saying she did or did not but I would definitely try and have quite a say in how it's done where it's done you know how it's put and then I'd be like and I'll keep it after thank you very much so yeah get it girl <laughs> um I think she's, I don't know much about her, but I think she's an amazing woman anyway. Um, the fact that she climbed up onto that plinth in the first place, correct me if I'm wrong, with no help, girl got strength. Um, <laughs> my friend quite recently did the same after like walking through town. <laughs> and it took her quite a while. And then when she got to the top, she couldn't get back down. And we were like, we're going to leave you there because this is your decision. So yeah, like, I feel like just power, power, power. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. <laughs> Precious. I agree with Josie. That's um, pure bravery. <laughs> and I rate her for that. Um, but I, I have a few things to say around that. So it's definitely important that we, well, people continue to expand their perspectives, right? And sometimes we have to take drastic actions for things to happen. And we've touched upon this on the last episode. Sometimes when we go by the books, it doesn't always work the way we want it to work. And sometimes we need to take drastic actions, which is necessary in this case. And if we look at statues in general in the UK, statues in the UK, they're not as diverse as they should be, if we're looking at that to start with. And they do not represent, like, they don't represent the UK's diverse population. If we're claiming that the UK is diverse, which... It's not as diverse as I would like it to be, but it's getting there. Um, the statues as well need to start getting diverse. And that's something else that we need to look at. And correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not sure, but I believe the first named black woman's statue to actually be erected was only um, unveiled in 2016. And that was Mary Seacles or something. Yeah, I think that was her name, Mary Seacles. And I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing the name right, <laughs> but... It's just important to have, for me, representation is a big deal. Representation matters. And her being on there, it's something I was very happy to see. 
um, and it was important. It was important for me, and I think it was Munira that mentioned before she took her younger sister or cousin to the place to take pictures of it. And it's important for her to capture that moment. It's something for her to talk about when she's older. And I think it's necessary to continue having those conversations. And just like decolonizing the curriculum, for example, there's been so many efforts to decol decolonize arts, and so many of them has failed. But I also feel like it's important to continue having these conversations. If we don't continue having these conversations and actually doing things about them, we will still be where we are right now. So it's important that we continue talking about it, to be honest, and continue walking the talk and not just talking. Yeah, so continue taking action and not just, not just, not just talking. Yeah, Munera? Exactly. I feel like, um, yeah, definitely. Um, she... she I don't, I don't have any fault or any blame with her for doing, for saying yes, right? But I don't think anything should be placed on the black woman, you know? Oftentimes when things like this happen and there's different people from different communities involved, people are like, well, what did the black woman do? What did the black woman say? Or what did the black person say? I don't think there should ever be um, a, conv not even, a, there shouldn't be a conversation, but like, People oftentimes, like when looking to find um, critique with black communities, would then refer to, oh, well, you know, this black person said such and such and such. I think she, the, the, the statue in terms of what it looked like, it, it was an awesome, it is an awesome statue, um, more power to her, more power to her for getting up on top of there, particularly seeing some of the energies of masculine and feminine, feminine that was going on in some sort of, um, a few times I saw a few things and I was like, nah, this isn't cool. So to see her taking that position, I'm like, okay, I'm really, I'm really happy to see that. Mm -hmm. I do think what happened was that Jen got a phone call from him and his team. He's a person and he has a whole team behind him. <laughs> if Jen said no, he would have found somebody else. I don't think he would have said, oh, okay, such a bad idea. Just Let's just scrap that one, right? I don't think he would have said that. And also just thinking about like, I don't know, just how it's going to go down in history or even just, not even in history, even looking now, you, you see articles, Jen's name's always second. When you go to Wikipedia, where's, where's her Wikipedia page? Where is this woman in sort of like, where is she evangelized in sort of like our story about this? She's secondary to it. And if she was first, maybe if her name was first, then I would feel a bit better about it. I definitely, more power, more respect to her. I'm glad that it, it was a black woman, obviously. But I do think about these various different things, you know? Yeah, deep, deep. Was that Janelle? Did I see you? Um, no, but I'm happy to talk anyways, because I'm always a chatterbox. Um, I kind of like feel like, I don't know enough about what happened with the statue to say how much of her involvement was, but I got the impression from what I researched into the artist that he is someone who does pieces with or without consent. So had she not given consent, he would have done the same statue in the same pose. It was just, it was great to have her endorse it in some way. Um, but I think it's really important. I don't feel like, in regards to her, I feel like, get your bread, make your money, okay? But I do think it's important though that, uh, that when we in get involved in projects or in ventures, that if we can have a way to influence it, if we have an opportunity to kind of advance things or to involve people more in the project, it is kind of our, I guess, burden to kind of do that. And so it's just, to say that as much as I don't have any judgment against her, I think it's important to also quantify it. We need to also kind of think of the responsibility of kind of like, what's the saying? Is it have one, teach one, and kind of bring other people involved into anything? Uh, or each one, teach one. Yes, Paris? That's it, thank you. Yeah, I think um, my point's gonna be quite similar to that. I think I definitely echo the feelings of like her agency and her choice and all of that. Um, but I don't think I could do something like that without bringing my sisters with me. I think whenever I'm creating something, if I'm uplifting myself, everyone's coming with me. Like my peer group, they're coming with me. So I think for me, that's what was missing in that. It was, okay, so where are all the other black women part, who are part of this movement and part of this community? Like how, 
like how are you bringing those people into this conversation and as well I think what felt like it was missing was the agency of her voice as well um I think like Nira was saying like where is where is Jen's voice in this and I think that's why it sits it sits weird with me um yeah it would be interesting to know the ins and outs of those conversations that she had with with the artist Emma I agree with and echo a lot of what you guys have said anyway, but I just kind of thought what was interesting that I wanted to like to raise is that I saw a tweet in response to this, um, like after like the whole like Evan talking about Mark Quinn, and then someone's talking about actually, but isn't it interesting that like just to actually have a statue of an everyday person, everyday black woman, like that would be the last person selected to replace Colston's float. And that for me was like really powerful because I just like took a moment to be like, I guess that's the significance of what that statue represented. But like, I don't know, I almost to a certain degree can't help but acknowledge like how powerful, like that in itself, like just so powerful. Um, and how, again, with Black Lives Matter, it really doesn't, there's a lot of black lives that aren't centered around this, whether or not it's like, when I mean, you look into like trans, like black lives and all of that, Jimmy, like there's such, such an oversight of the variation of all of this and I just feel like yeah that for me represents a lot um in regards to like how are we like moving forward how like black women how we uplift us how we protect black women like we've seen we've seen so much suffering in the last month particularly black women being exploited and I just feel like we do so much (laughs) we do so much so end of the day like let her let her have this moment of glory for all that she has done and achieved. Um, yeah, and also, like, it's just beautiful because it really, for me, like, I feel like it's added this question about, like, hey, so why couldn't an everyday black woman be a potential place? Why couldn't an everyday, like, community member? So I feel like that wouldn't, have, that wouldn't even be, like, consideration before. Do you know what I mean? Like, we'd be looking back into history books for, like, old, like, people in Bristol's history that would be significant. Whereas we've got we've got some amazing leaders in our community now and like how do we like again I also I'm not cut myself off but I also very much I'm like partly like do need statues abolish all statues like I don't feel like we need the, we don't need these tropes in the same way so why are we just playing to that I mean like why but also we don't see ourselves on that platform so why not have that significant the significance of having a black figure being the replacement of Colston is you can't overlook that um, so there's so many different voices in my head. I just can't. <laughs> I think we've, I think we've, I think you've heard all the different variations of Emma. I have. I'm taking it all. <laughs> but like, I feel like I'm. I, I feel the same. I feel like on one, on first and foremost, like we have Black Girl Convention for a reason. You know, we're, we're here to like uplift and to share and to connect and to, to, you know, to be each other's network and to be each other's rock. And we do go through so much, and we're carrying literally everything on our backs all the time whether people see it or whether they don't, we're still, we're still here grafting doing it. And so for her to like, you know, say yes, like it's kind of like, yeah, like if you have that personality type and you want to be that, you're going to say yes. It was, it was kind of a no brainer, but I definitely hear what you're saying, Paris, like where, who does she bring with her? And, and for her, was her, is her voice, I feel like we've seen a little bit of her, but I can't find her anywhere. You can't find her anywhere. You know, she's, she's like invisible and like maybe that's intentional because you know, she's saying, well, I don't need to speak because of the statue, my, me saying yes to the statue is my voice. But then I also feel like the, move, the movement has is, is, been going on for a long time and it will continue to go on and it's sparked such a big conversation. So I want to, I want to hear more, you know? And I think there's this whole thing around, you know, activism is, is for a cause, it's for a reason. You're usually doing something for an action or something to change. And so I think it's, you know, for me, I'm like, yeah, what, 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 what's the conversation or what is it that you wanted the conversation to be about? It can't just be, you know, obviously he says it's about racism and she says it was to, I think, inspire her, 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 her daughters or, you know, but I want to hear more. Like, I want to know what you, why, what you said yes to, if that makes sense. I think mm-hmm. the idea around uplifting or engaging or giving the opportunity to everyday members of the community, because a friend of mine was like, I saw it and he was just like, yeah, I saw it. And I was like, you know, who is she? I've never heard of her. You know, thinking it was a famous black woman that he just never heard of before <laughs> and then find out that she wasn't. That was like a, it opened a whole other conversation. And so for me, it's kind of like, it does open the conversation around everyday people being in that space. But then if we were having that conversation in the first place and we had the time to have that conversation, don't underestimate what we would have thought of anyway. 
don't underestimate that, you know, we're not going to think like the people that came before us and put those statues up there. It's not going to be some man who is actually a bad man. And we're just going to say, yeah, he's great. We are so much more intelligent than that. We're so much more thoughtful than that. We're so much more, you know, future, future thinking than that. So who, who says that we wouldn't have thought of the everyday elder in the community or younger in the community? Because we think differently already. So for me, there's, there's a lot going on. But I think, yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to hate on another black woman's opportunity for, for success or for, uh, for what she believes is her part in the movement. Because as black people, whatever you think you're doing is good, you know, it's your, it's, it's your agency. All we, ha- all, we, all we have is that. Do you know what I mean? At the end of the day, or as a minimum standard, we have that is to make our own decisions. But I think that I'd, I just want to hear a bit more and I want to know more about what, what do you want next? I see lots of hands. Um, I'm going to go with uh, JC and then I'll work my way around. I was just going to say that the fact that we haven't heard from her, I just, I guess, reflects, you know, the intention and the process of the statue being made and put up. Like she didn't, I don't assume, didn't come to be an activist and she didn't know when she was stepping onto that, that she would be turned into a statue. So like, you know, he's asked her to use her body to put and make a piece of artwork and stick it on there. So then like, to then ask her about her whole story and her life. And I think, isn't that a bit much? You know, even if that's what we want or that what we need, like, can we just let her get on with her life and just continue doing what she's doing in her every day? Do you know what I mean? So yeah, I kind of just, that's all I have to say. Who else? Paris? Yeah, and I think as, like going back off what you said, Mina, um, about the decision that she would have made at the time. Um, we also have agency to change our minds as well. Like if she hadn't spoken for whatever reason, if it could be because Josie, what you said about her getting on with her life, like, <clears throat> sorry, um, like we have the right to change our minds about things. Um, and I think that's often forgotten about when you think of black women and then black women's bodies and then black women being advocates or activists, like, we can change our minds like we are human like everybody else um and as well the whole idea of it not being able to be an everyday black person it has to be a good black person or something like that like no one else well people of what am I trying to say not no one else is judged those standards but we are far too often judged those standards of we have to be an exceptional black woman we have to have no history of anything that could be bad um so yeah so i don't know what my point is well, well yeah i mean yeah the, the fact that colton, <laughs> the fact, that, the fact mm. that colton was on the statue in the first place is a testament to say how bad you can be and still get a statue so mm. if you're if you're surviving out here as a black woman then that's a statue that's statue enough do you know what i mean but i guess what's really interesting as well as it's like because maybe i was like if she was to come out and change her mind, it's like she was not, not change her mind, but she, if she was to be more active and wanted to like discourse, like to have a discourse about this and like engage with different like conversations and dialogue going on. I think what's really interesting is like how we hold each other in account because she hasn't, you can almost by default, you can only just take her best intentions to heart. Like you can only just, do you know what I mean? Like, but I also feel like what's really interesting is that, um, I feel like people can really, people often criticise the black community for always just default supporting black people just because they're black. And for a lot of the reasons, I don't know, like it's, it's, it happens and often we do because we're the only ones rooting for each other and the only ones who actually like try and like support and understand each other to that depth that it requires. Um, but yeah, if she was to come out and literally just be like, didn't care about any of it or like if that doesn't seem to be her narrative now and like I don't feel like we should ever even put that on her but I suppose what's interesting because I can definitely imagine some talk like listening to this being like oh of course you guys are all going to be in agreement with her but obviously like in a certain way we haven't heard from her so you can only kind of see in the best but I think what's really important is that obviously when you have black people who come out and speak and when they're used as a way or even just like minorities in general like used as a way to like be tokenized and then be like the example that supports the oppressors or like the example that suppressed like do you mean like when they like are used I don't want to name I don't know I don't want to call out no political names I don't want to get involved <laughs> there are so many people in politics who are on certain parties that are definitely used as like a way to just be brought out just to show diversity and I think we just have to ongoingly be aware that we should hold our community to uh, certain standards 
even if like especially at times when we might not agree with them and i'm just saying this like just kind of to stir the pot a little bit in terms of like if she was to come out and say something that's wild I'm not, I'm not just supporting her because she's a black woman. I'm supporting her because I don't, haven't heard her voice. And I haven't, and because I haven't heard her voice, yeah, I've only really seen the best of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? That's a very and long so, way so, to get there. Yeah, and so then the question is, you know, what, it, it, I guess, you know, it's the silence. I don't know. I'm 50-50 because my, like, all my, like, aunties, they're like, Nigerian aunties, who is this? Who does she think? You know, like, they're on one. They're like, you know, they expect that excellence. They expect that's like you should have been someone who was excellent and like upstanding and visible and we've heard of them and there's a whole other conversation around you know the, the stories of black women not being told and not being shared and her narrative not being out there so that, that's a whole other conversation but that's what my sort of you know uh, parent and auntie is they're all kind of on they're on that kind of page but on the flip side I hear what you're saying about accountability and I don't know I think for me the whole thing is just salty I, I want I'm, I'm gonna put it out there and say I want more from her you know I'm not like and you know she's tired we're all tired do you know what I mean like we're all tired I feel like I want her to speak I want to hear the next what's next what's or, or even just to, to still if you if, if the argument is that um you know I've given what I wanted to give then you know maybe just you've centered yourself in the movement as well and you're the person you know he's going around saying you said yes so you you, you said yes so just kind of give us the I'm not saying anything anymore give us something I feel like as I, I feel like I want a bit more especially because there's so much conversation. I saw, I think I saw Precious, then I saw Minera. Yeah, um, I just wanted to add in something little to say that um, obviously we all protest differently and I feel like it's, it's a lot of pressure on her. Obviously she said yes to it and she should have expected that much pressure. She should have expected the whole world to know her name. At the same time, it's up to her to choose what she wants to do. It's up to her to, to choose what yeah. she wants to say. And it's just like, it takes me back to um, when the whole Black Lives Matter campaign started a lot more um, after Judge Floyd's mu murder. And everyone expected every single Black person to speak, right? And as much as we all wanted to speak, for example, I took my time. I, 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 sp I spoke at some point, but I took my time because I wanted to digest everything that, that was going on. And not everybody can get up at the same time and speak immediately. And it's important to actually take your time because you don't want to come out rash and say something that you don't want to say or do something that you don't want to do. And sometimes some people were actually obviously affected. It, it did affect a lot of people as well, their mental health and their mental well-being. And it was more important. I was advising my students at the time because I was still working for the student union. Um, and my advice to students was take your time. You don't really have to speak. I would advise you to speak at some point if you choose to, but you don't need to speak now. Your health is more important right now. Mm -hmm. Take a break, stay indoors, eat whatever you want to do. If you feel like speaking, do it. We can try and speak on your behalf. <laughs> So that, that's why, basically, in general, a statue is obviously something that should be there to make a huge, well, a statue of a person should be someone who made a huge impact in the society and deserves to deserves recognition, which obviously Coaston didn't, and which is why I supported it, we all support it being removed, but at the same time, like we were all saying for Jen Reed, we, we didn't know who she was, and I was just asking, just like everyone else, who is she, what did she do, why, why did she deserve it? But then at the same time, we live in a, in a modern world now, and change is the only thing that really is constant, and it's just, it's just, we just have to go with the flow sometimes, you change, whatever the world gives us, we go with it, but at the end of the day, basically my summary is, it's up to her to choose what she wants to do or say. I hear what you're saying, Precious. The only thing I'll say is the other thing that's always constant is racism, but side note. Um, <laughs> do you know what I mean? We know, we know that it hasn't changed. Um, it's going to change at some point. That's the goal. Munira, Munira. You know, I don't want to assume that this black woman doesn't have agency, but one thing or a few things that I would say is that A, everything's happened so fast. This is just the other day, you know? And sometimes you don't realize what something can do. You don't realize what the response is going to be to it. So there could be a point where she's thinking, well, actually, what next, you know? You know, it's interesting that she went on that plinth because some of us are saying, like myself, you know, some of us are saying, and I've heard a lot of people saying, we didn't know Jem Reed, who was she? Where was she before? But she's obviously got a voice which is why she went up on that plinth in the first place. And she was like, this is my chance. I need to take this platform. There was something in her, 
right? Now, what is it about having no platforms in Bristol? The reason why we have Black Girl Convention is because in the Southwest, there is a need for this. If everybody had like a platform and they knew what to do with the platform and it was easy, you know, then they probably, more people probably would take the platform. She may just be thinking, what do I do? Where do I go? How do I figure out what is next? You know, because, you know, if she was to go, all right, um, Bristol 24, here, here I am, interview me. People would say that she's arrogant, right? Or if she went there and she wasn't sure what she was going to say, she may think, oh, I don't want to say the wrong thing. She, maybe she's thinking, I don't want to try and represent all black women. So I think there's definitely something about platform and wanting to be able to platform, wanting to be able to do something, which is why she took that place. But maybe there's something about how do we figure out what is our voice? And I really, I think Black Girl Convention you know that is a place where we can come together and we keep, where we can commune and i think like we will start to see more people being able to articulate what it is that they're trying to say because that was definitely a he that was definitely an in the moment thing she wasn't logically thinking okay i'm gonna do this now that was an in the moment thing so now that everything is time to settle she might just be thinking how do i articulate my what next that's beautiful, actually. And I think maybe then what we need to do, maybe we'd invite her to a closed Black Girl Convention conversation. Because part of me wanting to hear is also about wanting to hold that space. And I know that when we come together, we're able to hold that space and we can have this conversation and we can influence each other's thoughts and process. And maybe, you know, if, if, if that's what she wants, then there's an open invitation there to have a closed conversation with other Black women in the Southwest or in Bristol even to kind of come and let's hold that space and let's, let's be part of that if, if she wants that. So that's an invitation to you, Jen, if you're watching this. Paris, I saw you. Oh. Um, We're in our final 10. I'm not sure. Go on, Josie. <laughs> I was just going to echo what Precious said about, you know, time. Like, in the recent months, like, for someone who has one of the biggest mouths going, I have been completely silent and that silence has spoken absolute volumes like I had someone come up to me at the protest the other day like are you really offline forever like are you genuinely not coming back online and I was like wow you really you really noticed that I've been gone and like <laughs> but um it's that, <laughs> it's that thing about I have had I had to protect myself I had to you know I had to sip my tea I had to practice that thing that we call self-care and process so much and that was that would only be what I would advise this woman to do. Like she's done her bit. She said yes. Give the girl a break. Yes, we are all doing the most. So like, yeah, like just let her breathe. And who she, she's probably plotting. She's probably you know she's probably got her post-it notes out. She's probably ready to come back with a bang. And that's kind of what I did. I was silent, and then I was like, bam, here you go. Here's the billboard <laughs> campaign. Bam, here you go. What are your plans? Do you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. give the girl a break and just practice what you preach for me. Protect yourself. You know practice self-care all of that good stuff because otherwise we literally carry the world on our shoulders every single flipping day the universe the universe no i hear that i hear that ladies i hear that that's that's good point who else which i pose okay so i want to put it like this just as we come to kind of the final close um we've got a couple minutes to go but just thinking about us as black women in bristol uh this is our city um, just kind of final thoughts. Like if you were, if you had to decide plinth, statue, no statue, something symbolic, what would you want? How would you do it? Big question, Nina. <clears throat> I mean, it's a big question and we've only got a few minutes to go, but we've got time. Or, or, or could we, yeah, go on, Precious. Do you mean um, specifically where the Coastal statue was? It could be. It's, it's, I guess the point, the point of the conversation was that you know, we've, we've had this, this, uh, this white artist from London has asked a black woman who said yes um, to putting a statue for in the city centre to continue this conversation around race and, you know, continue this conversation around, uh, I guess, what, in terms of what they said in terms of around who goes there and so on and so forth. But we're, we're talking about the fact that we haven't had a say, we haven't been part of it, should statues be there or not? So I just wanted to kind of like bring the conversation to a close and set us up maybe for our next conversation, but... If, if, if it was down to you, what would you want to do with it? How would you want to I move think it? I have, um, 
I'm, I'm still on the fence. So basically, and I'll try and justify this really quickly. I would say my initial thought would be to delete the whole stuff. Just cancel everything, take off everything, no statue, no monument, whatever. Let's forget that anything was there before. But then when I take my time to digest it and think about it a bit more, we need to reclaim that space, right? We need to represent ourselves. We need the younger version of ourselves, the younger generation to see us, to hear our voices. So yeah, it's, it's, a, it's in between. I'm still in between. I don't know. Let me hear what everyone else has to say. JC? Um, I think something like, it, wouldn't it be amazing if all of our allies came together with all their tools and all their power and they were like, okay, we're just gonna, we're just gonna create, we're gonna work with you, you young black artists, and we're gonna create and make all the things that you wanna see. And maybe like every week or every month, maybe every month, I don't know, they create and work, co-create with an artist to put up something that they wanna see. Something similar to, um, what's it, the People's Platform uh, project that's happening. And there, it's kind of the similar thing, but they're creating it digitally. So you submit your work and they create a digital representation of what you want. Because then, yeah, that's, you know, allies get what they want, they get to help us. And then, <laughs> and then obviously we get put on and like, that's, that's solidarity. I think that's actually what solidarity is. I think that would be really sick. Thanks, JC. Minera? Not to just jack your idea, JC. <laughs> 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 I think a similar sort of thing. However, I think it should be intergenerational because I'm very much aware of the fact that like my mother's generation, people who've been in Bristol for longer, they feel like they don't have a voice. You know, some of them have never had the opportunity to have a voice. So I think exactly the same thing, but keep it intergenerational. Thanks, Minera. Uh, Emma? I guess because I'm kind of very much sitting with fascists in terms of like, I don't want, I feel like we should abolish all statues and monuments, but also, said, like, secondly, I also feel like the significance of that is so important. But I almost feel like, why does that have to tie so much into Colston? Like, can we just get rid of the whole damn plinth and create another location that makes sense for us, that, like, really resonates? Mm. And then that can celebrate a figure that we consensually, like, put up. Like, for me, like, if we're gonna, if we had to do a statue, I, would, I, feel, I almost feel like, the significance of replacing Colston holds so much history and puts so much of a tie to it. There's going to be so much like back and forth, clashing of heads, people who didn't want the Colston being taken down anyway. I feel like that has so much of an impact. Whereas can we just do something else, dash the whole thing and then create another sculpture that actually just represents the Bristol's local black community um, and the history and whatever. But yeah, that's me. I agree. <laughs> Iris? Yeah, I think I definitely agree with um, what Emma said and also what Josie said um, and Manira about it being a collective thing that's, that is an ongoing installation or an ongoing conversation about the, the creativity that's in Bristol and the power that our voices have. I think that would be something that's more powerful than something that is standalone and something that is, oh, the statue that's now on the Colston plinth, like Emma said, um, because again, I think that's centering him in the story um, and like we're over it like that doesn't need to happen anymore Janelle so I kind of feel like I don't really have an emotive thing about what should replace Colston but for me I think it's bigger than Colston it's about looking at the statues of Bristol as the entire city and actually having a conversation whether that's something that's held in um, in City Hall or it's held in community halls around Bristol but it's about who do we actually want to celebrate as a city? And is it just Colston that is one of the statues that we want that we feel should come down? Should other towers or um, statues not be where they are? But also reflective there on that, what do we want to do and who we want to champion going forward? And I think it's more so that rather than taking uh, replacing Colston or taking them all down, it's about having a more diverse and inclusive story of Bristol. And so celebrating the various different cultures, people, ages, genders, 
everyone who's in Bristol, so that when we walk around the city, the statues that we see above us reflect us. And I think if we have that going forward, that's the change I want to see. Another sidebar thing is what I don't want to see is I don't want to see that Colston statue in the M shed, but that's another story, right? Uh, but like, I was so upset that it's in a museum because it's not, because it doesn't need to be celebrated. It needs to be forgotten. Leave it in the harbour. Um, just as we come to close, that's beautiful, Janelle. <laughs> I think for me, like, I'm on the page of, it's about stories and how we tell the story of our city and about representation. So echoing a lot of things that you said, Janelle, and, and some of the other comments. Intergenerational is really key. Definitely the elders, I don't feel like ha they have a voice. We don't hear from them. Um, and, and they have a lot to say and we have a lot to learn. And again, I think that they didn't have a chance, many of them, to, to speak went, went back in those times. And now it's kind of that space. Um, I think the last thing I'd say for me is I would just not put anything on that Colston thing. I'd rip up the whole of the city centre in the middle and open it up back up, actually, so we have the harbour and the river going all the way through again and just have different spaces so Colston isn't the centre of the conversation. But that's our time. Um, that's our first Black Girl Convention conversation, uh, part two, over and done. Thank you so much, everyone. And, um, yeah, we all want to hear from you in the comments. And, yeah, it's been beautiful. <laughs>